Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about a movie called American Graffiti from 1973. Now, this movie is almost 50 years old, so there are going to be some minor spoilers in here, but I really don't think it's going to detract from your enjoyment of the movie if you haven't seen it before. So with that being said, let's get into it. General plot of American Graffiti is a group of recent high school graduates from the 1950s who are starting to move on with their lives. Some people are not really wanting to leave their hometown, and other people are getting set to leave and are becoming a little bit hesitant while others really want to leave, but they have certain things drawing them back. A lot of this is based off of the life of director George Lucas, who actually directed this. I believe this was his second feature behind ATX-22. I probably got that name wrong, but if I did, I'll just correct it here. Yeah, if you're wondering if it's that George Lucas, yeah, it's Star Wars George Lucas. This is one of his first few films. It was fairly low budget at the time at just under $800,000, but it made a ton of money at the box office and received a lot of critical acclaim as well. It was nominated for Best Picture, and George Lucas was actually nominated for Best Director as well as Best Screenplay. This film stars a lot of young talent that would go on to do major things in the industry, such as Richard Dreyfuss, who plays sort of our lead character, Kurt. Uh, he went on to have a huge career starring in films such as Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, while also winning an Oscar eventually. Also stars Ron Howard, who was credited in the film as Ronnie Howard, who uh, went on to be a major film director, and if you don't know that name, if it isn't ringing a bell, I guarantee you, you've seen one of his films. He's directed things such as The Da Vinci Code and the most recent Han Solo movie. You've seen something in his filmography. Also stars Charles Martin Smith as the character Toad in the movie, sort of the nerd. Uh... And he actually went on to have a really successful acting and directing career as well. He would go on to star in The Untouchables and direct such films as Dolphin Tale and the cinematic masterpiece that is Air Bud. And then finally from the notable actors in here, we have Harrison Ford in what was either his first or one of his first major appearances in a film. There are a couple of stories here associated with Ford that I really liked from this movie, one of which was he was actually a full-time carpenter at the time of filming this, uh, so he wasn't really fully committed to being an actor. And then he also had it worked into his contract that he didn't actually have to cut his hair for the film, so what they did was they plucked a little cowboy hat onto him for the entire movie. Which, I don't really understand why you couldn't just have him with his long hair. I don't know why it really matters. Maybe people didn't have that style in the 1950s, but his character was also a street racer, so it would be known for him to rebel, but whatever. I'm not going to question George Lucas. The guy knows exactly what he's doing. And this film can really be considered what's known as a hangout movie, and really all that is is a movie in which the audience hangs out with the characters going about their day-to-day -day lives in what is normally about a day or maybe even, in this case, a night. Some other examples of movies that follow this format are Once Upon a Time in Hollywood recently and then also Dazed and Confused from 1993, which is actually, now that I think of it, also a new, somewhat new director uh, making a coming-of-age movie about people graduating high school from 20 years before the film's release, so... I guess if you're trying to get into the film industry, that's a good premise to go ahead and make a movie about. A lot of people would consider this type of film sort of boring since nothing of significance really happens throughout the film. Like I said, it's just inserting yourselves into the lives of these characters as they go about their day to day. However, that's why it's so important to get these characters right and to get the audience to fall in love with them over the span of an hour and a half. George Lucas absolutely accomplishes that here really get invested into what all the characters are going through throughout the night and really what they're going through maturity wise like i said before a lot of people don't want to leave their hometown right now this is sort of the beginning of the next phase of their lives and they're about to leave everything that they've ever known or at least most of them are all of them have really unique personalities even though they're all friends so you find yourself relating to each individual character in some weird way. You know a hangout movie is good if by the end of the film 
you become sad that you don't get to spend more time with the characters, and at least for me, American Graffiti is absolutely one of those movies. I know specifically for me, the scene whenever John drops off Carol at her house, I was sad. I was like, man, I really want to see if everything ends up well for her. She was just such a sweet girl, and it's incredible that a film that is going across these different storylines with all of these different characters gets you to care about a individual that much over such a short period of time. Something else that's absolutely pivotal for a Hangout movie is to set the atmosphere of the moment that you're in with the characters. And that's something that George Lucas accomplishes as well. There are a few times in this movie whenever there's no lead character on screen, there's no dialogue, there's really nothing happening, but it's just George Lucas showing you the setting, showing you the town that it's set in while playing 50s music and just getting you in the setting of where the story takes place and where the characters are living and more so where the characters are leaving. And I think that's super risky as a filmmaker because you risk your audience becoming bored that nothing is happening on screen. It honestly isn't too surprising that George Lucas is good at uh, building a world like this and getting the audience engrossed into a setting because we would later see him go on to do this with Star Wars, one of the biggest franchises in cinematic history, where he is literally setting up a whole new galaxy for audiences. Uh, he did something similar here, of course, on a very much lower scale of just getting you put into the setting of 1950s Modesto, California. However, you really do see uh, where he drew that talent from. And in a lot of ways, it feels like American Graffiti was sort of practice for what was to come next. If there was going to be anybody that could entrance an audience into 1960s Modesto, California, it was always going to be George Lucas. Uh, that's where he actually grew up. And this movie was actually supposed to be a love letter to his childhood upbringing. He wrote three of the characters based off of different phases of his life. Uh, Kurt is supposed to represent him in his college years. Character Brian is supposed to represent George Lucas whenever he was a street racer in his high school years. And the character of Toad is supposed to represent him in his freshman year of high school whenever he was sort of a nerd and not very good with girls. And for a movie that seems pretty simple on its surface, I was really interested to hear about just how much creativity went into actually writing this movie for George Lucas, and I respect the guy a lot to be able to pull himself from three different aspects of his life and put them into the setting of his childhood, make a movie that audiences could really connect to. It makes me really grateful to have people as creative as George Lucas being the ones that are making films. Something pretty interesting that I found while doing research for this film was that George Lucas opted to use the technoscope cameras uh, that gave it more of a widescreen documentary feel rather than the traditional cinemascope cameras. He did that so that it did get more of that documentary kind of feeling. You felt like you were being placed into a certain era of time rather than watching a movie based off of it. That and also apparently Technicolor cameras were cheaper than CinemaScope, but we're going to put that beside the point. To further the sort of documentary kind of feel, he actually encouraged the cast to improv a lot of the times whenever they were just hanging out. He apparently included mistakes that were made in the film as well, which I love it whenever filmmakers do that. I think it's actually unrealistic in movies that everyone gets their lines right all the time. Everyone is perfectly set, but he trips. So I really love that about this movie as well. This movie had a massive impact on culture, even beyond all of the awards that it was nominated for at the time. Because of the success of this movie, George Lucas was able to get the budget for his next movie, Star Wars. So if American Graffiti, a small scale movie on a small scale budget that's just a bunch of people hanging out isn't successful, we don't get Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Leia, we don't get the nine movie saga plus all of the you know random movie and TV shows as well that Disney is doing right now. We don't get one of the most culturally significant franchises in cinema history if not for this film. So right there, American Graffiti should be appreciated for what it was able to do for George Lucas. And also I touched on the actors before, but you watch this movie and you see so many young people 
at the very beginning of their career. Maybe not Ron Howard because he was on the Andy Griffith show, but you get my point. Harrison Ford is one of the highest grossing actors of all time, and this is one of his first roles. It's just wild to me that we even have Harrison Ford here, and it's so, it shows you that he has not changed at all for Hollywood because it's such a Harrison Ford thing to do to not want to cut your hair just for a movie and then work that into your contract. It made me really appreciate who he is because it's it really feels like nothing has changed over the years other than his net worth, obviously. This film, like many others in the sort of coming-of-age genre, is really good at being relatable to everyone regardless of where you grew up or when you grew up. I grew up in Texas and Montana in the 2000s and 2010s, and I'm over here relating to characters in the 1950s and struggles that they're going through and just what it's like at that moment of your life. So if you're looking for a film with great characters and awesome atmosphere and something that had a lot of further implications on cinema across its actors and then also its director and what he would go on to do, American Graffiti is absolutely the film for you. That's number 90 on the 100 Movie Marathon, American Graffiti, really great film that I loved rewatching. If you've seen it, leave your favorite scene down below in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching it all the way through, and I will see you for number 89. Bye, guys.